I'm Larry French. You probably have already seen that. Um, I, the reason that I got uh, buttonholed into this thing is because I was the chair of the membership committee for five years and served on the membership committee for 12 and have seen an awful lot of applications. So I, I think it's probably apropos that I could comment on your, on your uh, questions, but also to kind of run you through the process a bit to try to demystify it in case you haven't been through the application and understanding how it works. It's really not that hard, folks. So if you are an associate member and you have projects that you think are uh, something you would like to submit, I'd urge you to, to do the process because um, becoming a professional member is a milestone in your career and it does mean something. Um, whether you know it or not, people actually do know what IALD means and what profession, being a professional member means. Um, it's also one more step towards fellow, which I'd urge you all to aspire to as your career goes through its paces. Um, that was also something that I uh, uh, was very proud to be nominated for and to be uh, accepted. So I think all of these milestones that you have in your professional career do mean something and I'd urge you to, to strive for it. So the process is pretty simple, frankly. You submit an application, you pull together a portfolio of projects, and then it's reviewed. So I'll go through some sort of the hard nut stuff, but please interrupt me if you have any questions as we go along, um, because it's, it's probably better rather than waiting to the end. Um, okay, so what happens? You, you submit your application, which is reviewed by staff, um, to make sure that the information that you've submitted makes sense and that it has something to do with actually being a member, then th that's vetted and it's passed on to the membership committee uh, as, a, as a portfolio. And the membership committee does not know who you are when they're reviewing. It's a blind review. Uh, it's actually done without any internal discussion. So that blind review happens uh, independently of any kind of conversation or talk without knowing who you are. Right, you've got all of that, right? You've, any questions about this part? This, this is pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, all of these things are on the website, so I'm not gonna dwell on it too much, but these are the things that you basically need to provide. And a lot of this is standard stuff. Your firm bio, your firm uh, profile, the stuff that you have regularly published is just fine. You don't have to reinvent the wheel just send in what you normally would send as part of your uh, professional application for some kind of project. You know, you get an RFQ, that's the stuff. Everybody clear on that? Okay. <clears throat> if you have won IALD awards, that counts as a project. And it's given a specific number score. So if you depending upon what level the award was given. So if you have IALD awards, you don't have, you know, that's one less project that you have to submit. Yep. This is not, something to remember about the IALD. It is not a membership of companies. It's a membership of individuals. So it doesn't matter who you worked for or when. It's about your career trajectory, not who you worked for. So that pretty clear? Okay. Let me cover this, yeah. Now, if you happen to be a PLD member, um, a professional level member of the PLD, um, you can reduce the number of portfolio projects to two because we assume that if you've already passed through that process it's almost identical to the IALD as a matter of fact the membership categories between the two associations are identical so if you've already passed through that process it's considered equivalent to a membership in the IALD okay so here we go. This is the hardest part. The application's pretty easy. 
getting the portfolio together takes some time and effort. Um, which, by the way, I, I would urge you, as your career trajectory goes forward, try to keep a running list of everything that you've done and all the publications that you've done. Don't, don't wait until later to try to remember what it was and what you did and what projects you worked on. Keep your running list of your career current and try to update it every six months to every year. You could use it as the basis for your portfolio submission. You can't just submit, can't just submit the article, no. You, you actually, what, remember now, your portfolio is being reviewed by your peers. So it's different from a publication or something you do for your own publicity. This is something that you, that you know that the people who are like you or maybe even a little further along than you because everybody on the membership committee has to be a professional level member or better. And so you've got people there who know exactly what you do. So the difference between a portfolio and a, an article is you have to be more specific about what you did, did as, a, as a professional than what you did to the general public because the folks looking at it know exactly what you went through. This is why I always say that it's not absolutely necessary that it be professionally photographed. Um, it does need to be good enough so that the people looking at it who are your peers understand what you went through. Let me give you an example. Um, oftentimes there's either a couple of photographs or maybe one project out of the four that might knock you down to the point where you don't make the grade. And, and by the way, don't be shocked, don't be annoyed, don't be angry if it's sent back to you for uh, more information or another project. It's not that unusual. This is a hard thing at the final evaluation stage to get through. So I would say maybe one out of four or one out of five uh, are sent back for further information. It's often one project or a couple of photographs that knock you off. Um, I can remember one in particular where uh, it was a residential project that was submitted. Uh, there was one photograph of a pattern of, of holes in the ceiling, whatever they were doing, that made absolutely no, no sense whatsoever. And the committee was just mystified by why this happened. There was no exp explanation. It was sent back to the applicant and the applicant came back and said, oh, well, I, was, I had to use the existing holes. And it wasn't explained. So if that had been explained, you'd go, oh, okay, I got that now. This, you know, that made some sense. Um, there was another slide of the same project that showed a really, really bad example of a control system. It was like 25 wall box dimmers in a closet. The slide should never have been submitted in the first place. Just leave it out um, because yes you had to work with something existing but anybody who's done it knows you kind of run into that once in a while but it's it's the kind of slide where you just want to go yeah put in the closet <laughs> exactly which project should you choose hard thing to to decide obviously you want to pick the things that you're you think are your best work um, Sometimes it's not the most current. You'd like it to be the more current project if you can. If it's not, and that's what you have, explain that it's not now, that you did it 20 years ago. And what might, maybe what you would do differently now that you know what you're up to with current technology. You know, getting, getting a portfolio of, you know, four to 10 slides for four projects within a five year period unless you're a larger firm, that's, that's hard to do. So, and the committee knows this. Um, our, our profession, for the most part, is made up of small firms. So we do know what that means and what kind of an impact it has on all of your finances. You know, it costs money, uh, either in your time or in you know, a professional's time or teaming up with um, your design team, um, I probably am stating the obvious, but if 
if you're working on a project with a design team and a series of manufacturers and it turns out to be something significant, try to pair up. You know, figure out a consortium, some way that you can share the wealth in, or share the pain, I should say, of, of getting it photographed through pairing up with either manufacturers or your architect, your you know, engineers, etc., and split that cost. And usually, that's something that you can arrange. I mean, it, it usually works out. It's really helpful to capture where the lights are. Um, and honestly, I think um, if at, at, at all costs, if you can influence um, the photographer and the, the, your partners in the shoot, uh, that you're there. I mean, the other thing that happens, of course, is that it's all daytime. You know, everything's shot in the daytime. Um, and <laughs> it's of no use to, to us, frankly, because it, it really needs to be mostly nighttime shots. So you have to be there for the shoot. And it's, it's painful and long. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a commitment to time that costs you money as a professional. But you, frankly, you have to be there for the shoot. as opposed to a uh, temporary theatrical event. An exhibit, fine. It, if it's more or less permanent, even if it's a rotating thing, <coughs> if it's something designed <coughs> to be seen other than in a show context. You know, I, for example, like uh, a good example would be one project that uh, was submitted a while back was the e exterior lighting of um, of a historic building. It was a temporary event that was supposed to last a couple of months, but it was architectural lighting for the building. So that would be fine. Um, if you're, you know, lighting dance or theater or opera or whatever, that's, that's a different game and that's, that's, a, different, that's a different association. So um, th these criteria are what the committee is looking at in specific when they're doing a point evaluation of your project. So you want to answer these things, and they're actually in the PowerPoint um, template that you get from the website. So do be sure that you think about these things and that you answer them more or less in sequence or in at least touch on each of these things. It's important because the way that the evaluation is broken down uh, is weighted by these categories, along with other things. But this is something that's very specific that they, the committee goes through. You don't have to have a broad range of work across all project types. You can be a specialist in one area, which is fine. Um, so there's, there's not Again, the committee's not looking at being everything for everybody. There's a recognition that the profession is varied and that everybody has a different place in it. So it's, it's not like, we're, you know, the committee's looking for uh, the every person, you know. You don't have to have a, a huge range of products, projects across all disciplines. You could do just, for example, maybe, maybe you do just residential, uh, and that would be fine. Uh, as long as it all looks like it's pretty high quality and it looks like it's of a high professional standard. That's really what the committee's looking for. Um, do talk about the technical and talk about the things that didn't work, particularly if you have images which weren't so great maybe, but it, it does show something about the project that you had to, uh, you had to get past. It, it was a problem. Um, there's, there's not a, that's not a bad thing. So don't, don't feel worried about it, but do also consider, is there something that was so bad that I couldn't get past it, I had to deal with, that maybe it's better not to show? Might be better just leave it out. You don't have to, you don't have to flesh out a project just to make it look fat. Show the best of what you did and explain why you did it. And you're, you're, uh, compadres on the committee will know, for the most part, what they're looking at. They like to see before and after pictures? 
before and after is great. If yeah, if if you have enough slides or you have, yeah, that yeah. that's terrific. And and even if you don't have a before picture, it doesn't hurt to explain it in the text. Okay, PowerPoint template. This is on the web. You can go get it, use it. Um, if you don't use it, you're probably going to get it kicked back to you right from the beginning. So use the PowerPoint template. Um, it's already set up for you. The, the way that it's set up is the way the committee wants to see your information. If you are not a native English language speaker, um, there are people who can help you. It, it does have to be submitted in English, but if you're not, it's not, not your first language, get someone from staff to help you with editing the text. When you're submitting a professional portfolio, it's not like an award where typically in, in an award scenario, the people who are accepting your, your images want to have some degree of rights to use them. In a submission for a professional portfolio, the IALD does not want the right to use your image. They just want to see the image as, as a submission for portfolio but you still do need to get permission to use that image. Um, now, that being said as well, um, the, there is a document uh, posted on the website called the uh, Guidelines for Professional Credit, which, and, and also the uh, Code of Ethics speaks to the use of images from former employers. Uh, and I'd urge you to go read it because it is specific to allowing you to use images from people you've worked with so long as you are crediting them properly. Um, you know, you do want to talk about controls, by the way, folks, uh, even if you don't show it. Um, it's a minimum of four slides, a maximum of ten, and um, in, in that range it can be, you know, also composite photographs and pictures of drawings, pictures of, of uh, sketches, whatever you think is appropriate. Good to show when the project was done, what year did you do it, uh, how long did it take, um, was it complicated? If it was complicated, it's really important because the folks that are looking at this have been through your process. They know what you've been through. So explain what happened. Try to, f to stay with this format if you can. Put the image in, you know, over here. Do your text over here. If the image doesn't look good shrunk down like that, you can do a whole image on a slide and put the text in the next slide. But do try to keep things connected. Don't, don't do 10 images and then fill in the narrative at the end. Keep the narrative connected to the image so that each image has a, a connection to text. 10 images max, doesn't matter how many slides, but let me warn you, don't get too verbose. Um, and please, spell check and grammar check. I can't tell you how many portfolios come through with grammar and spelling errors, and it's an immediate um, negative. It's, it's just like your own professional work. If, if you're submitting things that are inaccurate or have errors, it calls into question everything that you do. These are, again, the kinds of things that are on the, uh, the base evaluation of your project. And the committee goes through the portfolios and they evaluate it and typically they get about, what, eight to ten? And once that committee accepts the portfolio, you are a professional member. It does not need to be voted on by the board. At, at that point, the membership committee has the authority to say, okay, you're in, you're, the prof you're a professional member. Um, there are a few things that happen when you become a professional member. You, you have a little better access on the website. You're listed in a different way on the website. Um, of course, you get to use the IALD letters in a particular way, although everybody who's a member a voting member can use the IALD letters in a particular way, but it, it does um, put you in a different category. So once the committee's made its decision, they pass it back through headquarters, 
and you're notified that you've been accepted. If for some reason the committee feels that they need more information or that something didn't quite make it or something dropped you below the threshold, 99% of the time they're going to come back to the applicant and say, you know, this project uh, hurt you. Could you submit something else? Or could you flesh out what it is that uh, it was about this project that uh, what made it particularly X, Y, or Z? Uh, there'll be every attempt made to try to encourage you to keep going and keep trying. Uh, it, is n it is never the uh, committee's intent to try to fail people, qu quite frankly. I mean, it's, it's, it's try to get you to succeed. Um, so if you submit and it doesn't go through the first time, please don't be offended. Uh, it's, it's not that unusual. You're required to have a couple of references uh, of someone who is not your current employer. Um, and it's good if it is an IALD member, um, but that's, it doesn't have to be. Um, but you don't have to be sponsored. Now, that being said, if you're submitting your portfolio, it sure wouldn't hurt if you decided to have one or more of your project vetted by somebody who's already been through the process. That, I, I think that's a really good idea. Just, am, I, am I on the right track, basically? If you're going to do this, uh, do contact the IALD. Think about using a mentor. Um, the former members of the membership committee, and there are quite a number of us, um, have all pretty much responded to a recent call for would you be willing to do this with a very overwhelming positive. So it's, it's a good way to find out if you're on the right track. Um, and, it's, and it's pretty painless.